meant lawmakers for rejecting a new bill to legalize marijuana as federal government approves 5.16 billion naira to build 192 flat personnel barracks for NDLA officials. Former Senate President Pius Ayim and other chieftains of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, reject suspension. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade, Otitoju, and Chris Kendi Wando. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. We begin on a sad note following the deaths of Lieutenant General Donaldson Oladikbo Ojeinka Dia, retired, who was former Chief of General Staff to the late military dictator, no, dictator General Sani Abacha. The former military administrator of Ogun State passed on in the early hours of Sunday, 26th of March, 20, 2023, a few weeks to his 79th birthday. Dia joined the Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna, and fought during the Nigerian Civil War. While serving in the military, Lieutenant General Ladipo Dia studied law at Amadou Bello University, Zaria, and the Nigerian Law School, where he has been called to bar as solicitor and advocate of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Julie, what a sad exit. I can't forget General Ladipo Dia, a man that played a very significant role through um, the military dictatorship of General Sani Abacha, a very amiable general, and he was like a brick builder in that particular administrator, ad administration of General Abacha. Yes, he was the, like the face of the administration because um, um, every time they needed to address very important issues, he was the one put forward. Mm. to speak for the administration. You know, the administration was very unpopular, mm. especially with the people of the Southwest, because um, uh, it was seen as the regime that mm. usurped Lacked um, a of... legitimate, mm. um, that stopped Abiola from assuming the presidency, because we thought that the interim government uh, was um, a contraption that would not last, and uh, I sure I mean, uh, okay, Abiola. Abiola would then um, take his mandate, take up his mandate. But it turned out that Abacha had other ideas. He too had plans to rule, and uh, many people thought Abacha was going to hand over to Abiola. They were they, they were mistaken because. Mm. Abacha, in fact, ruthlessly held on to power and uh, eventually detained the winner of the June 12th uh, election. We so, given how popular the regime was with the people of the Southwest, um, Dia was the one often used to speak to the, uh, the traditional rulers, to speak to opinion holders. You know, it was. Um, used to sell the administration and he was very very effective at that mm. um, it's unfortunate that uh, he had to die um, after years of frustration mm. um, he lost his rank because of the the coup um, that was planned to topple um, Abacha, he lost his rank and generally he lived a, a good portion of his life frustrated. Um, but one thing I remember him for was the attempt to create the Jebu state. He tried his best to get the Jebu state created, but there was disagreement over the the where, where the headquarters would be. <laughs> it was State said capital. that he wanted. I mean, it was said that I wanted to take the capital to Dobolu, okay. you know, and, uh, and that, that caused that caused friction even between him and Awujale, because mm. uh, Dobolu is not far from uh, Ijebode, and uh, a good number of them still see themselves more like. And at that time, it was easy to hmm? create a state. Yes. You go through this cumbersome process. But <laughs> at the same time, it, it must... It's just uh, a decree. <laughs> it must... Uh, everyone 
you must try to make all the stakeholders happy. Mm. But that didn't happen. Mm. One of the reasons it was also tough was because Lagos could then Lagos was already the smallest state in Nigeria by land mass. Mm. Lagos was um, in the event that they had succeeded in creating the Jebu state. The Jebus would be able to say, look, the whole of Ibejuleki, the whole of Ikorodu, um, even right up to Koshofehe and Somolu will be part of Ijebu, uh, Ijebu okay. state. Okay. Yes. So the argument again was that ah, if that was allowed to happen, Lagos will now be left with Agege, Badagri, and a few other places, meaning that Lagos could in fact become too small. You know, too small. But Ijebu state, if it had been created, would even have been bigger than a state like Ekiti. Hmm. By the time you have um, uh, up to Shomolu being part of Ijebu state, you have uh, Korodu, you have Beju Leki, you have uh, Leki, that Leki, where, Ekpe. Yeah, Leki Ekpe, you know, will have been part of Ijebu. Lots of Ekpe people. I, yes. So I think that was something that he desired to create that uh, didn't happen. And, Hmm. Uh, he was not happy about that. Siken, he never recovered from that um, cool allegation. If you remember that famous speech he made, that um, this thing was hatched from the top, that it was giving the, the opportunity you give a condemned person to talk, to just make one last statement. And he made that statement was so reverberating. And hmm. after that saga, I never saw the Oladik Bodia we used to see. Yes, um, quite unfortunate. Um, he had a very, very distinguished um, career in the military. Um, his, position, his appointment as Chief of Staff Defense Headquarters was strategic under Abacha. Don't oh, forget, the uh, cry has always been that a mandate has been taken away from somebody from the Southwest, more so, importantly, Ogo State, mm. where he comes from. Yes. So the assuage the feelings of not only the Southwest, but the people of Ugo State, he was picked. To let the to consultation let the with traditional rulers. Yeah. Yes, he was the one, he was the link, he was the super link. Uh, Jide and I are, are, are members, are supporters of uh, Manu. Mm. When you have a very good midfield, mm. you know that mm. your striker is just mm. the anchor man. You know what JJ was doing in those days when he was playing for you. So, when you get to him, you'll be able to distribute balls. And so, he was seen as the anchor person. And you know, something we, to, we spoke of camera before mm. we came, we were talking as a handsome man. We were talking, mm. <laughs> yes. you, know, yeah, yeah, you, you know, you said this, he was a handsome man. Very, very so, he has this charm around him, his smile. He's not your conventional military person, if you look at him, qualified yeah, lawyer, qualified and a lawyer. And, uh, so, and when he speaks, he speaks eloquently. So he has that charisma to be able to, and he was doing the job very, very well until that so issue. The, uh, the yes. Oputa panel. Yes, so until that issue of the coup came. And um, the lowest point of that coup was when he was captured on video, kneeling down and begging. begging and begging um, the Abacha, mm -hmm. begging for his life, and was giving well, a handkerchief to him. Yes, and Mustafa, sorry. Begging him with remember giving, uh, somebody yes. from yes. A, 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 a lieutenant general. Yes. Begging, Begging a major, a major, a major. Mm -hmm. yes. You can count yes. the rank back. Yes. So he, he even had to give him an, a handkerchief to clean. To clean. His nah, I remember. And that was it. I and I would say this. that. I also say that he, he also can, apart from what happened, he should count himself, himself as one of the most luckiest human beings on earth, because the the deal to to execute them had been done. Mm. It had been signed, sealed, and delivered, as mm. we say in law. Mm. It was just less than forty-eight hours. But fortunately for him and others, Abacha died. Mm -hmm. If as much as spent extra two, three days, even before he died, they would have been mm -hmm. executed. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's not, so much. Yes. Mm -hmm. But not only uh, Olari Waju, mm -hmm. Adesa, Adesa, and even OBJ. We mm -hmm. forgot that. Most people have forgotten that OBJ was part of this. Mm -hmm. No, OBJ yes. was not sentenced. No, no, he was not sentenced. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is that he was also caught Ropes. in this web. He was mm -hmm. roped into the, this thing. So, mm -hmm. but at the end of it all, Abacha died. Um, that region went away. Abdul Salami came, and, and that was it. And as Jide rightly said, one of the greatest things that um, I would not put it is the, the ranking. There is nothing that affects a, a, a military officer than being the rank. I remember vividly 
Um, that is a different no, restored. You, no. no, I don't think. I think. I, I don't think it was restored. Mm -hmm. restored. Let, I, I remember. I remember somebody challenging. Yes. For still addressing himself. Address himself. Address himself. You know, that's 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 mm -hmm. one. That's one. That's something no, I remember. Not officially. Yes. Did mm -hmm. A nice and some that means the compensation that goes with the rank. We thought yes. that when uh, the ambassador took over yeah. that they were going to be a victim of this injustice, yeah. Yeah. that he would try to redress those things. But he yeah. was more concerned about um, his own um, issue more than any, anyone else. Yeah. That was one of the questions that they tried to ask him one day that he got angry mm -hmm. was the people that you are detained together. Mm -hmm. People like Kunle Ajibade and the rest mm. of them. Yes, I remember. Why didn't you push for the for their convictions, for their convictions mm. to be quashed oh. so that so they that can get a pardon? Get but you were because as a president, and given the fact that was even a phantom coup, mm -hmm. it was. the evidence they had for the 1997 coup involving the year was uh, much more, because you remember that the Saibu confessed, yes. you know, Mm -hmm. But 1995, there was no coup. Mm -hmm. It was a phantom coup. No yet, yes. Mm -hmm. Yet, you became president. You had the chance to say, okay, everybody. Right the wrongs. You, know, right the wrongs. you didn't. Yes. A lot of them died frustrated. People like, well, remember that corner that used to come, mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Ajay? Mm -hmm. yeah, used yeah, to yeah. come here. Yes, from the he mm -hmm. died a frustrated man. So, mm -hmm. their ranks were not restored. Mm -hmm. They just. They just died frustrated. Yeah, so and I, he could have lifted their spirits by simply saying, say, look, these guys are not convinced anymore. Convinced and he could have paid them, them. their even yes, compensation. I just, I just, mm -hmm. So it is always very terrible. I, I was just saying that, I remember vividly, just recently, um, the, I think the general office, I don't know what is going on, that, did they remember the general we visited in Medjugorje that was in charge of um, the, is it, yes, Operation and uh, this thing that was the rank uh, that was the rank re recently the major general that we said at the time we went to Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. So um, they said there was a video What's about it. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. you know that kind of this thing. Once that happens to you in the military, it becomes a problem. Your juniors, your juniors, your juniors your yeah, and so yes. I don't even know what happened to. Him. I don't know whether he's been retired. Has he been retired? No, they, they, they sent him. To an office in Abuja. You see, time. so he right from major general is now a brigadier general. So you, you say, so it is a, mm. it's a, yes, it is like um, going to university, so supposed to pass and out. Was, you know, they university. set him up. It, it was, was set up. It was set up by some of the people. Yes, it was a set up. You know, it was a set up. So um, it's rather because unfortunate. Because usually, you know, in most parts of Borno State, mm. yeah, there is no network. So when they go into the bush to fight, they cannot use their phones. So he wanted the chief of army staff to see the situation of these on the See, we have lost three uh, the tires of our uh, MRAP. Uh, uh, this guy, we have lost troops, we are surrounded. Mm -hmm. So his plan was, OK, let me film this thing. When I get back to my Dubai, I will now upload. So that was the plan. Mm -hmm. Since and he wanted the man, he didn't want to be punished. Because the chief of army staff at that time could just court martial you mm -hmm. and accuse you of not wanting to fight. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, look, it's not as if we don't want to fight. You can see, see what's on ground. We are here. Me and the sector two commander, we are here. Mm -hmm. You know, well, at the end of the day, somebody he trusted, a, a soldier like him, uploaded it to the internet. Yes, and social, then it went viral. Yeah. Yeah. Big embarrassment. Ah, it became a big embarrassment. To the military. All right. In the last three weeks, elections have been won and lost in Nigeria with lessons learned. A Nigerian businessman based in Abia State, Steve Mukbabi, has gifted a new Toyota Prado SUV to the Abia re Returning Electoral Commissioner, Rec. Professor Nena Oti, for keeping her integrity during the electionary process. This was disclosed in a statement on his Facebook page on Thursday. He wrote, for your outstanding service to the people of Abia, I hereby request for this Prado to be delivered to Mrs. Nena Oti immediately after arrives in Nigeria next month. Recall that the wreck allegedly rejected a whopping $2 million bribe to burn. Some people stood high, some people when they see money at, you know, in the call of their duty, it's not everybody, it's not everybody in Nigeria, we're not all corrupt. 
No. Two million dollars is a tidal retirement benefit. Game changer. Honestly, mm. retirement benefits. Game changer. Is Life like, changing. Mm. Life changing. For man. this woman, she would have just maybe relocated them well, abroad and just. You see, two. the truth also is that in the era of beavers, it's difficult to get away with such things. To simply write, you can't write figures anymore because they will call for beavers. What is in the beavers report? But the beavers is not just going to do accreditation, it will also be able to send a report of its own. Uh, all the uh, parties, they now have, you know, during the Obasan era, there was nothing like situation room. Hmm. But our, our electoral process has become much more advanced that parties now have situation room. You are monitoring it. Your agents are they communicating. All know the this is the era hmm. of social media. When uh, uh, these phones first came, you could not even snap pictures with them. No, 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 no. Now, no data. You can, yes, you, you just can, call. No, so, no mm -hmm. uh, data. No. Mm -hmm. But these days, you can do a whole lot of things mm -hmm. with but this. Motorola talk about this. Yes, <laughs> where, where are you going to do video, <laughs> video call? You can't do video call. Yeah. 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 Buy one, get one free. So, now, the truth is, it's a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Um, by this, try to say the woman, the woman did not serve you, but the truth the is, it is a lot more difficult now. So, officers were kidnapped on the way to um collation center, the same result still prevailed. You can't do anything about it anymore. Everyone has his own copy, every agent. What are you going to say? They filled this form EC8A, oh. everybody they've snapped it, they have their copies. How are you going to alter it? People think that it's still like before. Mm. It's, a, it's, not, it's not that easy. More complex. See how long it took before they concluded the Zamfara thing. Mm. Those guys were whisked on their way to deliver, uh, on their way to collation center. The same result was still what was, was announced because you cannot change it. They put policemen there. They waited, wasted their time. In the end, the results still mm. prevailed. Mm. So... I congratulate the woman, you know, women always stand firm in things like this. I congratulate the woman for and the person who bought a car for himself and then decided that, look, let me give it to this woman. The, the truth is, the joy of finally seeing the back of PDP in that state and electing someone who is popular, Alex Oti, no doubt about it, deserve to win. Mm. He this, deserves to win. I think this is like his third attempt. Yeah. Yes. Mm. As, you know, I, I mm. predicted it. I said, this is, his, this is his best opportunity to become a governor. And he won. Because he had contested since 2015, he's been contesting. So, kudos to this woman. And it still shows that there are good Nigerians. Nigerians who can part with anything just so that we can achieve growth mm. and development as a country. These are the kind of people that deserve to be rewarded, not criminals. Uh, no. See, if someone stays faithful, the reward will come. It may not be immediately. This is a lesson. I don't know whether she will take the money, uh, we will take the car. But look, the gesture is a good one. She did not compromise. Mm. She stood firm. Mm. See how long it took. Mm. At the end of the day, what are you going to do? The guy was leading by an audacious margin. The result of being work cannot uh, overhaul the lead because the lead was massive. On a syllable lead. Yes. Uh, and during that time, even one of the candidates had considered. He had congratulated the man because he knew the way this thing was going, OT had been elected. So why, why make all this effort? And that's why when the governor even congratulated OT, OT was not impressed. Mm. Because OT Shut was referring to, time. OT was even referring to the efforts made, the kidnapping of uh, of uh, INEX staff and all that, in the desire to just make sure that they that change that Obingwa uh, uh, resolve. But in the end, uh, OT won, and uh, it's, it's just something that makes me happy. We said it earlier. It's like congratulations to the people of Anambra mm -hmm. as a whole. Ambia. 
I mean, the people have here as yes. a whole. Yes. It They've is. not had it so good. Yes. Um, it's good congratulations and, um, to our neighboring states. Um, I'm from Imo. Abia is free. And I also pray that one day Imo will be free. That is what we've been praying for. Uh, because when you look at the trajectory and look at some of these, our leaders, and what they pushed us through, you're not going to ask, are we from the same planet? Mm -hmm. What Oti has done is putting a stop to uh, what we call the dynasty of Ojus of Kanu in Abia State that started in 1999. Ojus of Kanu was elected as um, the governor of Abia State with so much hope. The election in 1999 for Ojus of Kanu was so overwhelming that the people of Abia felt that this is the man that can do the job. Because of his pedigree in business and the rest of them, they believed that he, could have bring, he would bring that to the table. But Oji spent eight years in Abia, and not much, he couldn't show much for it. He went ahead not only after eight years, but also to nominate his chief of staff, T.A. Oji, who was in prison as of the time of the election, that one won, and also ruled for another eight years. That's 16 years. Mm. The, um, um, now, Okeze Ikbazu, nominated by TOG, also was there for another, <laughs> another eight. So you can imagine what has happened. And there are so much expectation from most of these um, governors, young governors. But uh, that wasn't much. Like TA, uh, um, um, Okeze Ikbazu, people felt that, you know, that ABBA is the hub center of the commercial activities of Abia State and even to a larger state, the Southeast. Oh, and Melio felt that so much could be done within Abba. He tried his best, uh, best whether his best was enough. But when you look at the massive celebration, there's no state in Nigeria. Out of the 28 look, um, um, governorship election that was there, I never, probably in Kano, compared to Kano. Now you see that kind of celebration. I didn't see that in any other state, mm. apart from uh, Kano. Yeah, and sure. they showed that people were. Then back to the professor, the mother. Well, congratulations to her. You know, she came out and said that she is going to, she's, she said her job, her integrity as a professor was, as a, this is the vice chancellor of FUTO, Federal University no, of Technology, no, no, yes, and she said that she's not going, to, she said she's not only a lecturer, but also a pastor in a church. You understand what I'm trying to say? So she was not ready to compromise, mm -hmm. and that is what, so at the end of it, she delivered. But there was something that uh, 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 Dajide said that I totally agree with, that is the issue of beavers. I was watching OT two days ago on the national TV station where he was interviewed after the election. And he said it was this same Obimba that was used to rob him, mm. I think in 2019 or 2015, mm. I think 2019, that he was leading until he got to, and that is what has been used. He said the result that came in after the, this, he was leading. The next thing they brought from Obimba, they said it's over 90-something thousand votes. No, it's something that it ate. From there, they moved to 90. From 90, they moved to 103,000. And they said no. Then he thanked INEC also, because what they now did was now go to the back, go back and check the beavers, the back end mm. of beavers. I realized that PDP only had 9,000 9, votes in, uh, in, <laughs> in Obingwa. Yeah, and and <laughs> we had 3,000 something votes. That technology was, that technology was magic. So if there wasn't that, that, that technology, mm. and that was how some of us said that. We, I personally have said it time and time again that BFAS will be a changer if we agree to allow it to work. Mm. But if we continue to some compromise it, yes, it. there's some places mm. that they allow it, allow it. And that is why we're having some of the challenges. Because Professor Yakub Mahmoud would have written his name in so much of things if some of the people that were working uh, under uh, him uh, allowed the system to work. Mm. You can see what happened. And look, the same thing is happening if, if you look at Adamawa mm. and the rest of them. Mm. It's the same thing that's happening. If not, some people would have written result and just announced. But congratulations right. to the people of Abia and congratulations to Professor Uti on what she did. Okay. In an age and time where fake news is widespread, wishful thinking is easily mistaken as facts. The presidency has now come out to deny reports that President Mamadou Buhari is unwilling to hand over to the president-elect Bola Tinubu at the end of his tenure on the 29th of May, saying the government is already in transition phase. Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media 
and publicity Garba Sheo says the transition committee made up of representatives of the outgoing administration and the incoming, incoming meets on daily basis to plan the handover to Tinobu Shetima administration with President Buhari said to be eager to return home to enjoy his retirement. Mm. <laughs> Judy, mm. where is this coming from? <laughs> and you know we are in the season of um, of fake news, mm. all kinds of stories. These mm. days you don't even know which one to believe. Mm. Some will be written in a compelling manner. Honestly. That after all these years as journalists, you want to believe that oh, this is an excellent story. What if you find out that it's a lie? What's going on? We're in trouble with these people. I'm telling you. Huh? You just, just sit down after election to just all, the, all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Oh, um, somebody has gone to um, London to do a meeting with the... And everybody uh, took that story. Ukla Lansinka. See? You didn't see the picture of uh, Mariwola and Bola Tinubu? Did you come out with it? You just saw him, somebody on the wheelchair, hmm? and that is it. Yes. And, and the next the story thing, fake, the <laughs> after that fake story, you then see people protesting in Abuja that the uh, CGN should step down. Somebody was saying uh, that, oh, in Abuja, uh, we saw more than a dozen protesters, a dozen protests. Protests these days are paid for. Simple. If you want to organize your own protest, bring the money, they will organize it for you in Abuja. The people carrying placards, it's they don't an know industry. what they're carrying. Yes. yes, they do not see those who turn, turn the uh, <laughs> upside placard down. upside down. <laughs> Illiterate, they don't even know anything, they just give them back, oh yeah, go and protest. It's an industry on its own now. Mm. So to take protest I seriously, I imagine that it reflects the, the views of even the people protesting, is to be naive. These days, with some money, a little money, say, because it may fairly has rendered us poor, you can easily organize protest. Mm. So you know that it was planned. Okay, let's throw this story in that, oh, um, uh, Tinubu is trying to bribe the uh, CGN. Tinubu has traveled. The man must not travel. If he travels, they will say he's going for medical checkup. Every trip abroad must be for medical checkup. I, don't, I just don't understand. So now they've come up with this story again. Abuhari has told his insiders that he's not going to hand over to the president. And the, the president is saying, after he campaigned for him, he would then decide that he's not going to hand over to him. Why? Once somebody has won an election, whether it's somebody that you like or not, you have to hand over. We saw a transition from PDP to APC. It happens. So it doesn't have to be, it's just a normal thing that you have to hand over. And the president has not told anyone that he's not going to hand over. But in a season of, uh, of uh, fake news, I can tell you that we are still going to see worse. worse uh, yes. Every day, just read the, the papers, either online or traditional. Or, uh, the, uh, the, before you know it, you see a story that you believed, that looks so believable. You then come and hear that they have denied it. Mm -hmm. So there are people who, whose talk in trade is simply to sit down. They have the talent for evil, for negativity. Mm. They just sit down. Mm. And they, you, as a journalist, say, when you read the story, you say, ah, perhaps it's all lies. Mm. Remember that story that they found the money in somebody says, OK, wait a minute. Yes, they found money. The chairman, FCC so chairman came here and said so nothing like that happened. You know, he first mm. met with two people mm. and told mm. people that it's a lie. It's a lie. Then he like came that. on uh, your mm. view and said there was nothing like that. I led the investigation. Even the bra of the, the, the designer. The designer's the bra. Designer. Oh, that designer has mm -hmm. a golden bra, uh, a diamond bra, bra, bra and all that. Altered. People who are perverts. I don't, I don't even know how to describe these people. They are gone completely. They've lost it totally. And for these kind of people, their own views are the best, though. You can't disagree with them. Ah. If you disagree with them, they will abuse you. I've never seen people <laughs> like this. <laughs> How do you cope? Yeah, well, <laughs> stories like this, as tempting as, you know, you want to go, you want to hit, you want to hit, um, um, 
your social media handles with it immediately and everything. How do you feel tight? Next thing, I just saw Justice Ariwola, you know, coming from the Jimat service and mm -hmm. walking along his corridor and, you know, and the same clothes. And supposed to be holding meetings. Supposed to be, ah. <laughs> it is very difficult, even more difficult for online publishers like us. And um, this is one of the reasons why we set up the Guild of Professional Bloggers, uh, of which I'm a member, and we've been trying our best, but you ask yourself, how many can you be able to trap? Uh, how many? In fact, uh, this morning, uh, the spokesman, first PRO of police, uh, CSP um, uh, Olumuiwa, Olumuiwa uh, the job he, was also raised this issue on a platform that belongs of journalists. It's not just online journal, even mainstream. mainstream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that the rate at which fake he was even tired of helping uh, people try to get people out of trouble. That is journalists this time around who have been arrested, who have been and rest of the and I said we should just be careful because arrests will be made. In Nigeria, there is a law, there is what is uh, there is a law in place, and uh, that's what is called the cyber crime law. Uh, that was signed in, uh, in 2015 by President Goodlaw John Acta as he was leaving office. Mm. And that law makes it explicit mm. that if you get yourself involved in anything, fake news or news that are not verifiable, it is a criminal offense now. And I'll say the time, time number. I was a victim of that law. Mm. AY. Mm. I was. I was locked up for 13 days at the Koyi prison. Mm. Jide is laughing at me. Mm. <laughs> that means I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with a jail yeah, bed. <laughs> jail bed. <laughs> I was one of those that were used as guinea pig to test that law. My lawyer was talking about sedition. That he said, no, that's law. Is... Even the lawyers weren't aware that there was such law. Mm. So, mm. Yes, the last thing. That was the last, the hundred um, laws that were signed quickly by uh, good Lord Jonathan before mm. he left. Mm. So what I'm saying in essence is that People should be very, very careful. Mm. The fact is that most often they are not, we've not tested. You are even talking about that. No, we need There's to a, jail people the, who are doing the, the, And let me, you are even talking about, you forgot, you are even talking about, what of the video? You've forgotten the video mm. of the Naira, of people that are going around that say Naira was squeezed and they were bust in, uh, in this and was all over million and, mm. and CBN came to say, no, that is not Naira. Those are the waste. These are waste. Those are not Naira that we are causing. And they were causing. Sir, and they were causing. You know, go better for you. You know, better people for are you. suffering. You, know you are wasting of, money. So, uh, <laughs> back to the information. Anybody, any writing key person, we, say, we know that President Muhammad Buhari couldn't have come out to say that he will not hand over to President Man, they claim that he said it to his. Uh, Which, you know, close, close you, know, you know that which is a reliable source, yeah. anonymous source. Mm. That is what always we use to action. get away. To get away. To yes, yes, that, yes, that is what we use. But it, is, uh, it wouldn't fly. I don't believe that. Mm. Uh, a president elect has been elected. And those that are, are grieved have been asked to go to the courts. And won, everything, is heading, everything is heading towards the court. That was also how they came out to, to say that P2B is planning a rally. Across board that um, and uh, what was it called? It and uh, there are two this and that. The man uh, has to go and the democracy and this one. And the man had to come out and say, I am not planning any rally at all. So I think we should be very, very, very um, careful at this point in time. The situation in Nigeria is very fragile, and mm. people should just be careful with the utterances and some of the things that they post, especially mm. on social media, because before you know it, it will trigger a situation that we all cannot be able to handle. All right, moving on now. Described by many as quintessential, cerebral, bold, courageous, even audacious, Justice Alaba Omolaye Ajileye recently bowed out of the Nigerian judiciary. Events to celebrate his exemplary years of service featured a voluntary court session, book launch, public lecture, and a Thanksgiving service, among others. Nelson Etta reports. It was a week-long event to celebrate a man described as the shining light of Nigeria's justice system. Retired Justice Alaba Omolaya Jileye is regarded as one of Nigeria's leading experts in electronically generated evidence, a beacon of legal erudition, progressivism, truth, equity, as well as courage under fire. The celebration began with a valedictory session held in Lokoja, the Kogi state capital. My law is reputed to be one of the leading authorities on electronic evidence, its contribution to this jurisprudence cannot be ignored. My prayer 
simply is that a day will come in Nigeria when the process of appointment of judicial officers will accord respect to merit and be made transparent to the whole world to see. Next was a public lecture organized by the Rule of Law Development Foundation in partnership with eminent jurists with the theme, the A to Z of electronic evidence in Nigeria. Every electronic document is presumed to be authentic until the contrary is proved. And the onus of proving the, the authenticity is on the person who challenges it. So it is for me to just go to court and attempt to enter. The court prima facie, we admit, until it is challenged. And then somebody who can say that what I have tendered is not authentic is the one who will prove. The lecture was followed by a thanksgiving service in his honor in Lokoja. The celebration ended in Abuja with the launch of a new book in his honor titled Interest of Justice, Excellence in Judgment Writing by Judges. In honor of one of the shining lights of the judiciary and the global community of intellectualism, an uncommon legal personality, a profound jurist, an intellectual icon, Honorable Justice Andrew. Alaba Omolaye Ajileye. It was attended by justices and other members of the nation's judiciary family, as well as the governor of Kogi State, who was represented by his deputy. His Lordship Honorable Justice Alaba Omolaye Ajileye retired from our judiciary in Kogi State this week. In fact, we held the validatory court session in Lokoja just two days ago. I testify that his lordship is one of those jurists of whom you have no qualms whatsoever in classifying as professional, erudite, wise, upright, even incorruptible, and a fierce defender of the independence of the judiciary as an arm of government. Say by crime cyber secrecy, cyber, everything. They are still part of electronic uh, evidence. And if it is possible for you, my Lord, I would suggest that you take a chair in any university and give lectures so that you'll be able to continue to maintain your, uh, yourself intellectually. At a time when Nigeria's voting system is driven by technology, more justices like retired Justice Alaba Omolaya Jileye are needed in the nation's judiciary. Justice Alaba Omolaya Ajileye, did they tell us about him? Yeah, I, Justice Alaba Ajileye is um, from Mikinade, Kogi State, my mm. village, and um, he is one of the stars of Kogi State as a whole. Yeah, you see, we've seen many brilliant judges who were unable to make it to the top because they would never compromise. Mm -hmm. Laba Ajile is one of such judges, or was one of such judges. It will have been a thing of joy to me to see him and the level of Supreme Court, mm, Court of Appeal. Court of Appeal. Mm. But you know, in Nigeria, these things are politicized. Mm. You know, highly. These things are highly politicized. Um, you, are, you have to be nominated. To even become chief judge, too. You have to be someone who is ready to play uh, the game. To become a son, you and I know mm. that mm. you also must be ready to play uh, by certain rules. Otherwise, you know how brilliant you are. You know how long uh, um, Ghani mm. was bypassed. Yes. You know how long Femi Falan was, was bypassed. bypassed. Yes. And mm. even people much junior than them, people mm. who did not have their quality, yes, they, they became sons. So it's a, it's a tragedy that someone of the quality of Alabajile 
didn't get the chance to serve his country uh, on a bigger stage. But I know uh, he's such a self-contented man. I know that he's happy um, where he is. We've lost an opportunity to elevate him to the Supreme Court. Um, mm. But um, I believe that he will still be useful, just as someone suggested. The Beyond. universities, law mm. school, he will still be useful because he's an expert in electronically generated evidence. He's an expert in that area, that could respected you know, all over the country. Consultant. So he will be a, a consultant, he will be useful. So mm. I wish him God's speed mm. as he moves on with his... Mm. Tiken, we had compared to Theo Elias, Nikki Toby, Oputa, these days. The yes. quality of judges we have. Mm. Yes, um, especially to, uh, within the Supreme Court level. Um, we've lost uh, so many um, justices that you expect that would have made it to, to the Supreme Court. And um, as Didi rightly said, it's politicized. Mm. In those days, you can count, you can name the number of justices, the main, main justices at the Supreme Court. You don't even need to be told. Mm. By the time you see their judgments, we know them. We used to know them. So many of them, you don't even need to be told. But now, <laughs> if you are asked to name um, two, three, four, five justices mm. at the Supreme Court, I doubt whether you'll be able to mm. name any. Not that we don't have um, very sound ones, but most often than not, you come to see uh, some of these uh, are For uh, someone like uh, Justice Alaba uh, Ajile, uh, I've read so many of his judgments, very sound. Very sound. And you talk about electronic generated um, uh, judgment and issue. That is a very new uh, type of law. Yeah, yeah. Because it is very, very new. Yes. In our jurisprudence, very, very new. Because you never used to allow now, anything yes, yes, electronic. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's very, very new. Mm. And for that, you expect that such a person can be able to make it to at least the Court of Appeal. And but we'll see what happened. Mm. But um, he has done his bit. And if Nigerian finding what, which I, I think we should, we should be able to put in charge of certain um, other organizations where we can tap. We are talking about law school. We're having uh, most of them um, coming to schools to teach now. We have so many professors, even retired, they have come around to teach us when we are in school and the rest of them. I think we can expect, it is better that he's retiring with good health. Yes. Mm. There are some people, and his intelligence, intact. you can see, his, you yeah. see him talking. Some of yeah. them will retire and they won't be, you know, they don't have it up there mm. for whatever reason. So you should just thank his God that he wasn't put to mm. hit that particular bet. And, you and, know, wish him, people, and wish him the best of luck. You know, people sometimes say, ah, did they? Um, we like it when you are discussing law. I have many people that I ask questions when we are discussing legal issues. Mm. And they will see sometimes I'm able to say, look, this is the way this matter will end. And it will end like that. It's because of people like this. Well, haven't I told you that you come? Mm. It's because of people I, like mm. this. Yes. Mm. Yes. You see, I will ask yes. a lawyer. Yeah. After asking a lawyer, I will still ask a judge. Mm. I have them, what I have judges. Should we, what should we be positioned Big the judges that I still ask questions to. The people think we just come here and talk mm. rubbish. You know? Without researching. People like this. I threw a challenge I'm, to you, I'm, didn't I'm I? Glad, mm -hmm. I threw a I'm challenge. glad that I was able to use him. <laughs> And, uh, you have not answered me. There are still others that are missing. <laughs> you have not answered me. I threw a challenge <laughs> at you. And you told me that I seek no, God Where's wills it? that I should yes. be a journalist. God didn't say Am I, I, not a be, journalist? I should be a, a, a lawyer. Am I not a journalist? You know, I like arguing a lot. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I should become a lawyer. It will be worse. If I now become a lawyer, no, it will make you a better. No, Jide, no, no, no. I disagree with you. It will make you a better journalist. Because until I went back to read law, there are so many things I took for granted. Forget the fact you are a journalist, you are a journalist. But the fact is, journalism is just like law. Because, because journalists okay. are expected to know everything. I, I, take, take, your I take your advice. I take your advice on board. Please, okay. Okay. I take it on board. Please, do. okay. Please do. <laughs> All right. Moving on now. After more than two decades of unconventional warfare, the fight against terrorism in Nigeria continues to evolve. Reports say Boko Haram has established a recruitment center at Danilahi village in Niger Republic. Counter-insurgency experts in Lake Chad say the intention 
of the terror group is to teach extremist views to the boys and girls that are unemployed in the Sahel region. It is believed that there had been influx of Boko Haram extremists fleeing continued Islamic states of West African province, Iswa, onslaught at Sambisa Forest in Bornu states, Northeast Nigeria. This latest development now results in the attack and kidnap of residents in Niger Republic. Jide, you know I used to ask this question that the number of people that have uh, surrendered, mm -hmm. the number of people they've killed, that how do they still get people, more people, more people to swell their ranks? They will always find people unless governments become more um, ubiquitous in terms of the, the, the reach of their programs meant to develop the very rural mm. part of our country. There are many parts of the North, for example, where they've not felt any impact mm. of government. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially those I remember region. when I went to Kankara, mm. where those uh, schoolboys were kidnapped in yes. Kasina. We went to a village called Dansabao. Mm. That Dansabao is separated from Zamfara State by a stream. Mm. I can't even call it a river. Mm -hmm. By a stream. Just mm -hmm. a natural separation. The other side is Zamfara. Mm. If you see road mm. leading to the place, mm. ah, how terrible. Oh my mm. God. Mm. Ordinarily, ordinarily, you should be able to, in 18 minutes, you should be able to get to that village. But it took us more than two hours. No and that government is presence at all. With ELOC, so multi terrain vehicles, so yeah. multi terrain vehicles, yet two hours plus for an 18 minutes journey. And no light, hmm. nothing. The people, they so are just there. Basic amenities. And that, no, basically, no, no water, no water, no electricity. No potable water, no electricity. They are just on their own. And you know, these are, are people, their standards are not high. All they want is let government even do Fit. something, no matter how little for them. Mm. Now, where you fail to take governance to those nooks and crannies, the remote, these boys, Boko Haram, and other, even bandits are doing the same thing mm. now. Bandits are recruiting young men and women in Casino State. Even the governor told me by himself that more and more women are coming into banditry. Mm -hmm. So now when you fail to do your duty of making life meaningful to these people, mm -hmm. these band, uh, terrorists will come mm -hmm. and then say, look, you've been forgotten about government, by government. You've been forgotten by government. Mm -hmm. But we can make life more meaningful for you. Come and join us. Mm -hmm. Your life will be better when you join us. Mm -hmm. They are doing that. They are work, they, they are, they are uh, succeeding at doing that. Mm -hmm. Even in the northeast, I mean, in the northwest now with banditry, you see people like Belo Truji, they are recruiting mm -hmm. young people, they are recruiting um, spies mm -hmm. who will stand by the roadside and be watching vehicles passing. Mm -hmm. And then when they see somebody in an SUV, they say, oh, CKN is coming with his uh, uh, <laughs> SUV. Mm -hmm. They'll go and wait for him. Yeah. <laughs> They'll go and wait for him in front. front. They've mm -hmm. hired people who are doing that. Smiles. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, in the mm -hmm. cities, in the cities now, mm -hmm. they've hired women who spy on other women, mm -hmm. spy on other people. They will now go and be kidnapping those people. It was inside Guso that they kidnapped the essay to the governor of Zamfara mm. on political matters mm -hmm. inside the state capital. Mm. Mm. They need information like that. And with Tucanos decimating their ranks constantly, with uh, um, the infighting between them leading to hundreds of deaths, because the Shekau people mm. have not forgiven ISWAP, they are going after ISWAP, they are slaughtering them. Mm. They need to replace the people being lost. Because they want this terrorism to still continue, their sponsors will bring money. So they need to recruit more people. This thing started a long time ago, along the border with Niger Republic. 
There are young people being trained, they will give them money. Mm -hmm. They are recruiting them, they will give them money. And once they give this uh, uh, children money, those they've joined them, they may never come back again. In any case, what is life, what is the value of life after all to a lot of these people? Mm -hmm. People have not felt the impact of government. So when these ones take them away and shower money at them, for a, a foreign currency, mm. God, they have access to it. It's finished. If they like, they can take them all the way to Mali to go and fight. They can take them to uh, um, um, Burkina Faso. Central and even Mauritania. Mm. Because their, their presence is in all of those mm. places. If they like, they use them in Nigeria. Muslims. Some of the people being used by terrorists in our country are not Nigerians. I've said it even... Uh, bandits too are recruiting foreigners now to come and fight in our country. Hmm. So this is the thing. We have to uh, attack the recruitment source. Do make it difficult for them to find people to recruit. We have to go after their access for money. Because without money, they won't be able to buy weapons. Yeah. So if we can do that, then even the issue of uh, uh, access to illicit drugs because yes. without illicit drugs, the whole is high. You can't simply take a knife and say you are cutting another person's neck. Ah. It takes it takes semi madness mm. to do some of these things, and it is drugs mm. that predispose people to behave like animals. Mm. Mm. Again, when you see the role poverty play, unemployment and yes, everything, exactly. and the inability of our government to reach out to that level, yeah. you know. The state government, that's why we have state government, we have local government, but these people, I don't, I don't know, because local government should be very close to these people, in, uh, wherever they are. That's why you've hit the nail on the head. The issue number one is poverty. The level of poverty in the north is so high. Across the country now. <laughs> the, uh, the north is even higher. Secondly, second uh, tied to that, education. Most of the young children in the North are out of school. The armagery system is causing a lot of havoc. I was, I, I've been saying this severally. I was in Bauchi, um, I was in Kanu, and uh, one other state, I can't remember now, some years back, in Hawaii. If you see the number of children on the streets, Yes. Carrying plates, yes. begging. He anyway, just came back from the north mm. for the election. Mm. I'm sure you must have seen it too. Of course, of course. Any restaurant, any restaurant, you, any restaurant. Any restaurant you sit down to at eat, the point time, you, I, I, you will I could see them yes, with their yeah, bowls. With their bowls. They will, most of them have not even had their bath for weeks. You yes. need to see their body. Mm. I was so scared at a point mm. that I was saying, what is this, this problem? In the next 10, 15 years now. Those so guys those are very, very fatal, recruit, fatal recruitment. I had to, where we stopped, wanted to eat. Because of the sheer number of these things, I have to now put hand in my pocket and say, please, give them break. They started fighting. Because you will see over five, six, seven of them rushing after one loaf of bread. Yes. Mm. At and time, at that point, you, you ask to, yourself. You need to do something. Yes. Just then at that point, you ask yourself, if somebody, this student can run after a loaf of bread, four, five, then you can imagine somebody giving the 100 naira. And for them to do certain things. And that is why it was always very easy to mobilize them for any mischief in the north. If you want to see any riot, look at some of the, uh, recently, even in some of the election we just had, and when you see some of those going to certain houses and breaking houses, and this, they are just kids, very kids. Most of them don't stay with their parents. Once they, are, they get to a certain age, they are handed over to uh, our fathers and the rest of them. That is where they stay. Those ones also, we send them out to go and beg. So it has become a very recruiting, fatal recruiting ground for terrorists. And we just have to address the issue of poverty. Number one. Two is education. GD, AY. If the children are in school, it will be difficult for you to come and just like in the south here, in the morning our children go to school. Yes. So you cannot see at Majiri when Sule Lamido was gone. Yes, in Jigawa. In Jigawa. He did because, it. Because he, 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 will take, he will send you to jail mm -hmm. if they find your uh, child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he made, even secondary school, he, he, he made sure that um, it was, uh, what was it called? Compulsory. Uh, compulsory. compulsory. And, and, and burning. Yeah. Mm. 
So they will be guaranteed. I know that, I know that Nasir El Nupai wanted to do something along that line at one, at one point. I don't know how. No, but whether he, he, he also whether did, it, whether it, he also did it. it. He but also did the level, it. you will see the level of out of school children in the north. So the, that is, those are the kind of agenda we'll be setting for most of these new leaders, especially in the north. It's not just about saying, oh, you want to empower the, you want to do. Kwakwans also did something a little bit when he was, a, when he was a governor of uh, Kanu State. Kanu State. He, he tried. You have to but make education level. free. Free. A lot so, of those parents cannot that, pay. That is it. They can't pay wife fees. They can't pay school fees. So make uh, education free and quality. At least. So all some of those boys, some some of these boys will call and margin if they yeah. get a chance. Yeah. Yes. Then some of them are very brilliant. Yeah. 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 If they yeah. get a chance, yeah. they yes. will do better than privileged children. Look at all some of those students that were kidnapped. Uh, where is it now? From... Uh, this place that were taken by Boko Haram that were released later, this uh, cheaper guest. Yes. See some of them that were sent abroad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go and see how, 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 how you could see what they did. We're dusting everybody. You were dusting people and dusting. So, that, so the opportunity is the there. Opportunity. So, so, but our government needs to address, and that is why I have a problem. When the Minister of, uh, what's her name now? Uh, humanitarian Affairs. Humanitarian Affairs is saying and telling us how much he spent on it. Where most of this bulk of this money needs to be spent, they are not spending mm -hmm. it. All right. We'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's Journalist Hangout on Sunday. We'll be right back after this time out. In the month of March, on the 3rd is World Wildlife Day. On March the 8th is a day set aside as International Women's Day. March 13th and also World Down Syndrome Day. World Water Day is on the 22nd. And March 24th is World Tuberculosis Day. While March 25th is International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery. Finally, on the 28th of March, it's one year remembrance of the Abuja Kaduna train attack. Brace yourself for an interesting March only on TV. -C. Every major news story is with Benny Perspective and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TV's News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live at the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news. The National Assembly is a busy place. As the bastion of democracy, it is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. We take you through plenary, committee meetings, and probes, all to ensure smooth working of the democratic process. Thank you for staying with us. Chairman of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLE, Brigadier General Buba Marwa retired as lauded the lawmakers for rejecting what he called another attempt to push through a bill to, de to decriminalize cannabis cultivation, sale, and use in Nigeria on the floor of the Green Chamber of the National Assembly. Mara said history would remember those who stood with parents to protect them and their children from any legislation that would turn Nigeria into a nation of junkies and criminals. He noted that in 2018, drug survey figure, 10.6 million Nigerians abusing cannabis alone was enough to sound the alarm bell. Jide, this is a big problem, even for the fact that it's still not legalized, mm -hmm. the number of our youths that are into mm -hmm. this thing. Some will tell you that they use it to make um, cakes. Some will tell you they use it to cook beans. Some will tell you that they smoke it. Some will call it loud. Some will call it uh, different names for it. Mm. But I can tell you the number of our youths that are into this thing without it being legalized. There are areas you go to 
that is like a free zone for um, um, Indian hemp smokers all around the country. Yes, um, the, two, the 2018 survey showed that 10.6 million Nigerians are abusing cannabis. On the shoulders are on the big on the yeah, Just cannabis alone. Okay. Uh, which is, okay, uh, which not, is uh, not ref, marijuana. Not like, mm -hmm. Which, which mm -hmm. is marijuana. That's mm -hmm. their own name for uh, marijuana. So 10.6 million Nigerians. Mm -hmm. One in seven Nigerians are into drugs. One in four are female. Mm -hmm. One in four uh, Nigerians. Into drug one one in seven Nigerians right, use illicit drugs. Why one in four are actually female? Fourteen point four million Nigerians are currently under the influence of uh, drugs. As far as uh, General Marwa is concerned, Nigeria is the highest consumer of cannabis worldwide. You know, it, it is made worse by the fact that. We, we, we grow it. Hmm. You go to some states like uh, Ondo, Ondo states. Ondo state, Ekotas. they grow it <laughs> in sufficient uh, <laughs> quantity. Number. People. You know? <laughs> Even in the kitty, some people grow it mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. that is what has made it Big readily available. Mm. Despite all the efforts that uh, NDLA are making, they are making seizures, they are destroying this thing, it is still getting to their users. Despite all their efforts, they too are becoming more and more, users are becoming more and more sophisticated. We now see courier companies taking uh, these uh, illicit drugs, cocaine, heroin, um, uh, Arizona, mm. Loud, and the rest of them. They take them and deliver to official big big customers in highbrow areas of, uh, of the city of Lagos and even Abuja. The truth is, these people, they are already, uh, they are, they are, their system is already accustomed mm. or tuned to consuming illicit drugs. Mm. So in the day, if they don't take it, it feels like they are going to die. Mm. It feels like they are going to die. So, they make sure that it is available to them readily. They don't mind how much it costs. They will, the, the courier companies will come and deliver to them. When I interviewed Gerard Marwa some months back, she said that, he said that they were beginning to even arrest those courier companies. Mm. Uh, delivering them. Yeah, yes. Because how can we have a situation in which young people even think that it is such a good thing? Mm. You see young guests, yes, see nothing wrong with it. Interns, interns, mm. mm. seventeen-year-old, mm. eighteen-year-old mm. guests, mm. guests who are your not yes, what? Yes, yes, smoking in their hand. I know. It's nothing to them. If it's you, nothing to them. If you happen to party with them, any party that ah. you know, mm. you will see them in the street. Even colleagues, some mm. of our colleagues, mm. they don't see anything wrong in smoking in their hand. How? Why are you smoking in their hand as if uh, it is food? And if you are not careful, you go to a party, they can actually put it in your cake. You can eat it. In fact, someone told me that a boy ran mad after they used Indian hemp to prepare um, Indomie mm. noodles. Mm. He ate it, he never recovered. In the hotels now, they like say, green. you see, see, look at cylinder. what they are doing. Mm -hmm. see, see where they kept it. Mm -hmm. You know? It's a cylinder. See where they kept it. They use all kinds of tricks to try to escape with drugs. All kinds of tricks. But our people are beating them to their game. And I can understand why Jeremarwa is excited. They, in trying to decriminalize the use of cannabis sativa, Indian hemp, which is the name that a lot of Nigerians uh, call it, you, if we are not careful, you are saying that, oh, it has medicinal value, that they can use it for medicine. But when you decriminalize it and say, okay, people can have access to it, the people want to destroy their own lives with it. 
and mm. go to be in the overwhelming majority. Mm. The people who are smoking it now, they are not interested in the medicinal value. Some of them don't even know okay. whether, and actually you can, they use it even for women. It helps uh, yeah. hair growth yeah. and all that. Mm. But many people don't know, they just want to consume it. Mm. All right, we'll take this break again. When we come back, we'll talk more. Please stay with us. Every week, Green Angle, in partnership with World Aid, will bring you a documentary series on environmental issues affecting Nigeria's amazing biodiversity, from climate change, air pollution, and wildlife conservation. We will be traveling across Nigeria to give you on the ground report of the issues affecting our environment. It airs every Saturday at 4.30 p.m., only on TVC News. The National Assembly is a busy place. As the bastion of democracy, it is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. <laughs> Your Excellency, Kamara Tani Pada, Adede Wana Lokati, Zangabatata, Maitareja, So Hong Kong Nazar Zampara, Kumazapa and Senata, Amazapa Zampara Tayama, Wanda Mukema Patar, Yazamara Shukabama Telisa Tawa, Nigeria. Theta Allah, His Excellency, Honorable Dr. Abdul Aziz Yara Ubakar, Shatima Zampara, Bwa Allah Masukiti Asaura Ramuna, Masukiti Bwa Allah Asaura Ramuna, Masukiti Bwa Allah Asaura Ramuna, Masukiti Bwa Allah Asaura Ra, Adede Wana Lokachi, Nahangi, Alhaji, Mokhtar Shaw, Idris Kogunam Kusaw, Yahawa Awana Uli, Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! To Adenia wana loka chi Na ke paru chi kien kaba tata Maitana cha aza ba pensa na ta Chu ka bomba jalisa ta ta wana jena deta Allah His Excellency Honorable Dr. Abdelaziz Yara Ubakar Shatima Zampara Your Excellency Allahu Akbar. 
الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على هاتم النبي المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن دعا بدعته وسن بسنته إلى يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم ما جرما قمنا جهزا فرا دكتور بيلو محمد مطول مرادون وندا متى ما كنسى كيو قلتا أنان His Excellency Magirma Shugabanjam Iya Takasa Ta APC His Excellency Ablai Adamu Wanda By his Chairman Nanos Izeke Wa Ilta Anan Komar Mustafa the Southern Zonal Vice Chairman, the Airway Committee, the Secretary of the Sioux, Shugaban Jamiya, Southern Shua Gabani, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ayaw, Ena Dokeda Parintiki, Bisaga, Shedia Tataparko, Atiki Inu Wannan's ID, Nagura Antona, Kaya shakarun tu, wakili chini aki ya azo ai amaya u Allah ya goda mani chuo na azo de kina domain adamu dota na ayuka ina pata chuo Allah zeba madama mchikavu ana ayuka domain hii demoku ah kamparo kile shere Allah ya chika mana ba wote shikara wote tajuo. Allah ya amin chia ka haka muna ruko Allah ka amin chia muna Edamba mantaba Shekara bara Ainji mota Tirela tarida sapa inda oku Ma Shekara Allah ya abade yuko ainji Tirela taribu Ini insha Allah Allah ka bama yuko Shekara mantaba Dari uku dahona wako dari uku dahona wako dahona wako dahona wako Abanda za nchi anashine Na asamahi yewa njamaa dekenan Mabiyane garemu Kuma Hasa lima